Hey there, YouTube family, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with DJ. And I, of course, am your host, Chef DJ. So today we'll be making a simple yet beautiful classic dessert. It is going to be an apple pie with homemade dough, homemade filling. All that stuff is going to be nice. It has a little bit of a twist to it. It's so going to make it sort of like a spiced apple pie. And so we're going to get that started. I'm going to show you how to do that from start to finish. So get your seasoning cabinet open as I have mine and let's get started. All right, and so here are the ingredients that you will need for tonight's recipe. For your dough, you will need two cups of gold metal all-purpose flour. You will need a stick and a half of softened butter, about two tablespoons of cold water, and a dash of salt. For your apple pie filling, you will need about two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, seven Granny Smith apples or Gala apples, whichever you prefer, but I would suggest using Granny Smith or Gala apples to have a uh, more firm consistency for your filling. Uh, a dash of black pepper, you will need about a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, about two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, about two teaspoons of vanilla flavor. You will need about a cup of domino sugar. Also, you will need about another half stick of butter to add to your gala apples and your flour mixture once you have combined those. And so now that you know what we need, let's get started. Oh yeah, by the way, I also failed to mention that you will need some lemon juice. You need about two to three teaspoons of lemon juice. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to peel our apples. If you haven't noticed something about soul food or any type of Southern style food, the preparation is the longest part, but once you get finished with preparation, everything is um, easy selling, smooth selling, if you will. But yeah, you're going to peel these apples I'm gonna cut them up. I wish I had an apple cutter, but I don't have that. Hint, hint, <laughs> no, I could get my own apple cutter. But yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna peel these apples, get these out the way. Fill them all up. And you know, this is one of the best things you can do if you have any fruit around the house that you want to keep from it going to waste. I don't know what it is nowadays, but it seems that the, uh, Produce just doesn't last the way it used to. When I was a kid, I felt like apples lasted forever. Like that was the last of the fruit to go rotten, seemingly. Uh, but uh, I guess things change, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's the things that they're using in our produce. The things that they're trying to do to make mass production. I don't know. All I know is that when they go bad, I have to do something with them. No food wasted. Amen? <laughs> Amen. And so yeah, this is what we're gonna do. Peel these up. We're gonna make a nice spiced apple type of uh, pie. Nice spiced apple pie. Which is why you're going to see the dash of uh, black pepper. You're going to see nutmeg. We're not going to use too much as you don't want to alter the flavor too much that you can't recognize what it is that you're eating. Um, you want it to be recognizable, of course. A rather simple process it's not hard and if you're watching um, you will find that adding flour to your apples to your apples after you've cut them all up and added your sugar and your butter that is what makes the filling thicker you can have that when you don't have to pay me for it <laughs> it works very well um, calls for an excellent apple pie the sweetest apples to make an apple pie with would be a Gala apple. They're good, but also I like the texture and the flavor of a Granny Smith apple. You kind of get the savory effect, which is why I choose to go with the Granny Smith apple. And because I don't want them to rot on me. It's a real quick process, but as with anything with soul food, it's a very long preparation. Um, Anything soul food takes long for whatever reason. Um, if it's macaroni and cheese, it's a long process. If it's um, apple pie, peach cobbler, uh, 
cornbread stuffing, all of them are a long process. But once you finish, it is well worth the wait. It is well worth the preparation. It's always good. Never disappoints. Family love it. Kids love it. Grandma and them love it. And that's why we do it. And that's why it's called soul food. Because you put your whole soul into that bill. Let's see here. Did I get all of that? Yeah, I got all the peel. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be chopped up anyway. You'll need you a good paring knife. Those work wonders. Get you a nice paring knife. Help you cut the apples as small or as large as you want. Some like their apples to be diced up for the apple pie. I don't particularly like that. I like for mine to be um, sliced versus uh, minced or mashed. If I wanted applesauce, I would have made applesauce, but uh, to each its own, you know. It's a very good thing though. And while I'm doing this, you know, if you guys have any suggestions on what you think I should cook next, feel free to drop them under the comments on any video and tell me what you're looking for me to make next. Something simple, something complicated. Listen, I'm all for the challenges, so throw them at me. I believe that I'll be capable to handle it. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Don't go all crazy on me. Just throw me a suggestion. Apples are almost done. You see, it's rather quick, but it's it's a little time consuming, but it is quick. Get you a good apple peeler, I mean a, a peeler. You peel apples with us, peel potatoes with it. This peeler has seen many great days. <laughs> it uh, works wonders. I remember when grandma would sometimes peel different vegetables like potatoes and, and also produce like apples she would peel them with a small paring knife it worked but i thought like oh this is too much my hands would cramp all up your hands still cramp up even with a peeler sometimes but not as much as it would with a paring knife and trying to hold it tight and keep it from slipping and it slips out of your hand falls to the floor now you got to catch it nobody has time for all that so we want to keep it simple Almost done. And the reason why you see me with the, the little arm accents and all that stuff, I, it was just a spur of the moment type of video where I figured, you know, let me just drop a dessert here and let me not let these apples go to waste because I would feel so bad for doing that. I don't want that to happen. I don't believe in wasting food, as I said before. No, food is meant to be eaten. Even if I don't eat it, I'll give it to someone else. But most definitely, it's going to be eaten. <laughs> it's going to be eaten. You will not be wasted. There are so many other recipes that you can do with these apples as well. You can also add them to a um, to a cornbread stuffing. Some like an apple cranberry type of stuffing. Add a little bit of chicken in there. It's really good. I've had it. It's great. It's not my first choice, but I have had it and I do like it. Sometimes you just have a taste for something different. So you can definitely incorporate apples into your cornbread stuffing. You can do an apple pie. You can do a apple strudel, apple turnovers. You know, apples work for a lot of good things. You can even bake your apples. If you've never baked an apple, try it. I promise you, you will love it. Just get you a little bit of butter, some sugar, brown sugar. Or if you don't have brown sugar, use regular uh, white sugar doesn't have to be domino I just swear by domino that's just what I like to use but you can use sugar a little bit of vanilla flavor cover those apples up in some foil and you would roast it the same way that you would roast a baked potato and it's really good it's very good it's very 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 good you will like it so try that out all right so our apples are peeled now we're going to cut these boys up a little paring knife be sure to cup your fingers in so you don't cut yourself you know you never want to do that not a good feeling you see this and what I like to do is I like to cut out 
the center of the apple because I don't like to bite into a apple pie and have a uh, seeds in it. But maybe some like the seeds. I don't know. Maybe it has nutritional value. I don't know. Uh, you may like seeds in your apple pie. I just want to be on the safe side as not to offend anyone because some may like it. You know, some love it. I did not know. Listen, I did not know that you could eat the stem of a strawberry. Supposedly, there's a lot of nutritional value in that. So like I said, some people, you keep things on their fruit for a reason, you know, maybe has some type of nutritional value. Maybe they found out something new that you don't know and so they just like it. And, and that's cool, that's what you do. I just don't like seeds in my apple, like I said before. I don't particularly care for it. But if that's what you wanna do, go for it. I say knock yourself out, you know, have at it. Take the center out, cut them out just like that. To me, it's simple, it's quick, it's easy. That's like I said, get you a good paring knife, man. It gets the job done. It gets the job done. And you still keep the shape of the apple. You don't have to worry about it looking like, a, I don't know, another fruit or something that was just concocted or something that you just did a science project on. center out real quick done see that it's real quick painless easy doesn't take a long time get your paring knife and just go to work center out see that there real simple that's the end so it doesn't need to be cut out see this here I like to do it just make things quicker for yourself make it easier make it a little simpler I don't like how large this one was cut so I'm gonna cut it a little thinner let's see see paring knife <laughs> work wonders right there right there we're going to throw these into a bowl and let's find us a bowl put these in because they're starting to get in my way a little bit there we go those there and continue cutting okay that end doesn't need to be cut see this here ah, I cut that a little bit thinner then like how thick that came out there we go See here, the center out. All right, got that. Yeah, man, apples have always been a favorite in my family. Um, and you know, I really didn't find out about the apple cornbread stuffing until I got older. And I was like, oh, this is different. You know, I like trying different things. And the apple cornbread stuffing is actually excellent. Whoever came up with that idea, great. Put some fresh cranberries up in there with the apples. It's really good. Some even like to go as far as throwing walnuts in their, in their uh, cornbread stuffing. And it really does work. It's really good. It has a sweet and savory taste. It's really good. So if you haven't tried that, Thanksgiving is coming up very soon. Isn't it something how fast time is going? I would definitely say give it a try. And if you don't like it, just say, hey, Donald, you know what? I tried what you said. I don't like that. I don't. That's perfectly fine. If you don't like it, it's cool. Try something else, you know, or stick with what you know. Some people I know aren't um, too keen on trying new things. 
and that's perfectly fine if you're not. But if you're like me and you're a little adventurous with food and like trying out new things, I would say give it a try. You'll love it. This paring knife is something wonderful. I love it. I absolutely love it. It gets the job done, y'all. You see? It's done real quick. And being sure to watch my fingers because you don't want to cut yourself and be on camera and they'll remember you as a guy that cut his fingers off making an apple pie. I don't want to be remembered for that. <laughs> so yeah, let's 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 not do that. Let's be safe. Cup your fingers. Be safe. Also, I don't have any, any gloves on because it's a spur of the moment video, as I said before. Just real quick, something I wanted to do real fast and show you guys how to do. Somebody out there has been wondering, how do I make an apple pie? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm about to show you. For some reason, I keep throwing beyond my bowl. I don't know if I'm thinking I'm playing basketball or what, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm trying to make you this apple pie and not lose all the apples. You just have some dough with some cinnamon on it, and that wouldn't be appealing. Let's see here. Cut that core out. All right, slice this one up. See how fast that is, guys? Goes by really quick. Cut you again. here and you notice I'm just throwing the ends in here the ends really don't have anything on them but it's those insides that have the little seeds that you see falling all over the place in the core and it almost a bite into that I remember eating an apple pie years ago it seemed like they left everything inside of the pie like they just cut the apple in pieces and just Threw inside some dough and said, hey, here you go, apple pie. Put some ice cream on it. You'll never know. Oh, yeah, I knew all about it. It was very uncomfortable. <laughs> it was very disrespectful to me. So you want to make sure that you get all that stuff out of there. Okay. And as you can see, oxidation is getting to them, which is why we're going to use some of our lemon juice. We're going to splash that on these apples to keep them off from turning brown. Um, and if you want to keep your fruit from turning brown, just put a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of citrus. Lip, sim, uh, Jesus, what am I saying? Lemon juice, pineapple juice, uh, orange juice, something with a little acidity in it. It would help keep the oxidation from getting to them as bad. You don't want them to turn into mush on you. Matter of fact, let me get that lemon juice right now. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Take that lemon juice. Oh, I got a seed in there. Get that out. Squirt a little bit of that lemon juice on there. That's about two tablespoons right there. I want to cover this up. Just shake it. Keep you from having a whole bunch of mushy apples. There we go. All right. And we're still working. Getting our apples done. Let's see here. I don't know if I really want to use all of these. Maybe I'll use all of them. I kind of feel like I don't need to, but I think I will. Yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and just load the apple pie up. Use five, why not use two more, right? Okay. Just like that, the apples are all done, so 
dump them inside there. Our lemon juice, see that? They haven't turned brown on you. That lemon juice really helps with the oxidation so you don't have to worry about that too much. All right, so now we're going to get started with our apple pie filling. What you're going to do is you're going to need a cup of some domino sugar. That's what we're going to add to that. Let's see here. I'm trying to get my measuring cup out. There we have it. All right, measuring cup. Here we go. So we're going to do a cup of sugar. And as I said earlier, some might get really sweet. I don't care for my pie to be really sweet because what's going to happen is once you add the butter and that pinch of salt to your apples, they will sweat out their sweetness. They will sweat out their flavor. So you may not want to add too much sugar. So I think a, a cup of sugar by itself is perfectly fine. So we've done that. We're now going to add, let's see here. We'll add our vanilla flavor. Let's see, we'll do that. I'm gonna do about maybe for the amount of apples that I have, let's shoot for two teaspoons of vanilla flavor. You don't want it to be overpowering. Some like white vanilla flavor, some like it to be the dark vanilla flavor. Whichever you choose to use is perfectly fine. This is what I'm using. And um, I like it. I think it's great. Gonna add your nutmeg here. You're gonna use about a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon of nutmeg. Let's shoot for the full teaspoon. There we go. And you're going to add about two teaspoons of cinnamon. Here we are. Go. Now remember I said you're going to need another stick of butter for your apple mixture. Here it is. About to pull it out here. And this is how you're going to make, this is how you're going to make your apple pie filling. All right. Just going to take a few slices of that. Slice that up in here. And this is how you'll make an apple pie. So for those of you that want to make an apple pie for somebody one day, this is how you make apple pie. It's real simple, man. I'm just putting a little twist on it. Some have even done gone as far as adding to um, their apple pies um, rum flavor. I've done that. That's excellent. Rum flavor is excellent. Some have added actual rum to their apple pies. I'm sure that's very good as well, because if the rum flavor is good, it's derived from the rum, actually. I would assume that it's good, right? So I would say, play around with it a little bit. Spice it up, do whatever you choose to do with it, make it all your own. Whatever you're making, make sure that you make it all your own. Make sure you try it out on yourself first. Uh, don't bring it to the family gathering. If you're not sure how good it is, I would say wait a little bit. Just be careful. Don't do too much. Hey, less is more, right? So we're going to add something else to this. We're going to add our flour. This is how you're going to make your filling for your apple pie. Once I can get the bag open. <laughs> I want to open the bag of flour. I think they seal them so tight. It's hard to get open. You don't want to bust the whole bag of flour open. What a waste. I don't want to do that. All right, so I got that open. So we're going to do, let's see, I said two tablespoons. So we're going to do four teaspoons, which would equal two tablespoons. Two teaspoons equals a tablespoon. So let's do four. Two, 
three, and uh, four. We're all done. Get that. You put your flour up for the moment because we're going to still use that to make our dough. We'll get you a big spoon and mix it all together. And this is how the apple pie filling is made. Simple, plain and simple. As you can see, it's starting to caramelize as we're mixing. You see that? So what happens is once you cover it with the dough that we're going to make, once you cover it with the dough, it begins to cook and form something beautiful on the inside. Cut a little hole on the top. And it smells great. Oh man, the smell is awesome, you. You guys, the smell is awesome. I wish you could smell it. I wish you could smell it. And this is what your apple pie filling consists of. One thing I forgot to add. Two things. A little bit of black pepper. Just a sprinkle, not a lot. And a dash of salt. And that's it. Let's mix that all in. I promise you, this is gonna be great. You're gonna thank me for this. When you finally taste your apple pie, you'll be like, wow, that man knew what he was talking about. So that's all mixed up. We're going to set this aside and let's get started on our dough. We got to do that and be done with this video. Let's go ahead and get started on that uh, crust. Our dough for our apple pie. Or crust, like I said. We're going to need two cups of flour. One, let's go ahead, it's rolling, and here's the second cup right there. All right, remember I told you that you're going to need Two, well, one and a half stick of softened butter. Here you are. We're gonna take that, gonna drop that in there. Uh, moving along is real simple. It's real simple. I think I showed you how to make dough in the previous videos, and if you haven't seen it, by all means, go back. The last video showed you how to make. Pasta dough. This one is showing you how to make a dough for dessert, for pastries. That's how you're going to do this one. All right, so we have that. We're going to need about a pinch of salt. Like I said, you're going to need you some cold water. So you got you some cold water right here. I need about two tablespoons of that. You want to mix this all together until it forms into a dough. It's one of the simplest things to make. Some think that dough is hard to make. It's not hard. It's real simple. Really simple. You'd be surprised. And if it seems like it's too rough, just add a little more water. But this is forming nicely, so we're not going to need to add pretty much anything else as much, I don't think. Let's see. Not all the way finished yet. I had to take off my watch and my ring and all that. You don't want to get dough all inside that stuff. It's not good. The dough is forming nicely, so I don't think we'll need anything else. So what you'll do after this is you'll take it and you'll put it on a lightly floured surface and you can roll your dough out and then you can start putting it inside the pan. Oh, by the way, we're putting it inside a skillet. Did I tell y'all that? Yeah, we're putting this all inside of a skillet. This is going right inside of a skillet. It wouldn't be an apple pie, not a proper country apple pie if it's not inside a skillet. You've got to put it in the skillet, man. 
It has to go in the skillet. Yeah, our dough is forming nice. You see that? Look at this. Beautiful. Hand gets tired, just switch to the other hand. And you know what? And if you don't like making dough, you can definitely buy pie crust from the store. It's already made. It's the same exact dough. You can buy it from the store. Do what you got to do. Make it work for you. Whatever is more convenient. Whichever is easiest. Whichever is less time consuming. Because there are times that I've had to uh, use store-bought dough to make cobblers and pies. Because I didn't have the time to roll out dough. But today I got the time. Today I got time. I got nothing but time today. So here we are. There is our dough. Look at that. So now we're going to get ready to roll this bad boy out. Flour our surface a little bit. And roll out this dough. And I'll show you how we make something wonderful after that. Show you how to make something wonderful. Show you how to do it. Here we go. If you guys haven't noticed, I stutter a little bit. But I'm sure that you understand every word that I'm saying. I have a family that is based from Sylvania, Georgia. And so we all talk a lot like me. So I have to remind myself that, wait a minute, it's not family, so they don't know what you're talking about. They can't, they can't understand you. So I'm slowing down a little bit. Putting a little bit of flour on top of the cutting board. This is gonna be my surface today. Lightly flour it. Take this dough, put it here. Oh wow, great. All right, so now we can get ready to roll this out, all right? Roll out our dough. There we go. There we go. You see, it's really, real simple. It's really simple, guys. Really simple. It's not complicated. It's not hard. You can do this. And like I said, if you don't like rolling out dough, because I know people that don't like the feeling of dough on their hands and all that stuff and that's perfectly fine if you don't like it hey that's that's fine it's not for everyone everyone doesn't like that if you don't care for it buy you some store-bought dough and it will taste just the same use the same ingredients it'll taste just the same it'll be like i made it or like your grandma made it because that's where i get all this stuff from i'm just going to take this right here i'm going to cut a little circle out of it with our trusty dusty paring knife and we're gonna put this into that skillet. So what will happen is, magic will happen once you drop it inside the skillet. Magic is gonna happen. That butter inside that dough is gonna get inside that skillet and it's gonna become crispy on the bottom, soft on the inside. Man, look, you are going to love it. Gonna cut me out a little circle here. It doesn't have to be perfect because what I'm going to do is press this into the skillet. Where's that skillet at? Right here. I'm going to take that dough. And we are going to press it right into that skillet. Mash it up. Mash is the word that we're going to use. I'm going to mash this dough right up inside the skillet. It's okay if it falls apart. That's perfectly fine. That happens. But we're going to take this dough and we are going to mash it, press it into the skillet. Just press it right into that skillet like that. Get all the corners. And the remainder of that dough, we're gonna roll out and we're gonna put it on top. And that's how we're gonna make it happen. I've even made sweet potato pie in this skillet. And man, the taste is so much better. I, I don't know what it is about the cast iron. It just tastes better. Cast iron skillets hold flavor. 
So maybe that's what it is. But it holds the flavor of everything inside that cast iron and it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. So if you don't have any skillets, I promise you to go and get one. I'm encouraging you to go get you a skillet. And when you try it, try it out, sample it, because some people can't cook on them. They cook their uh, food too high. What I would suggest, keeping everything on a medium to a medium low heat, and you'll have a perfectly cooked meal every time. I fry chicken in skillets, I bake in skillets, I bake the cake in a skillet, I've baked cobblers in skillets and sweet potato pie in skillets, so it can be done. Even shepherd's pie has gotten baked in a skillet. And if you haven't seen about the shepherd's pie inside a skillet, go back to my previous videos. I think it's about two videos ago. And you will see how to make a shepherd's pie. And we made the same dough. This dough right here works for a lot of dishes. For desserts, for pastries, for uh, comfort foods, pot pie. I even use the same for a pot pie video that I did um, a few months ago. So go back and look at them. All right, so remember that apple pie mixture that we had? We are going to throw that bad boy in this here dough. And we're gonna make this thing magic. Here it is. Got that, remember that? And this is just your four teaspoonfuls of flour, your butter, a little bit of lemon juice, your one cup of sugar, cinnamon, dash of black pepper, dash of salt, and two teaspoons of vanilla flavor. We're gonna put that right inside that skillet. And we're gonna make this wonderful. We're gonna make this work. Look at that, look at that. Look at this right here. So what happens is when you cover this up, it's gonna work as like a steam pot. For lack of better words, it's gonna be like a steam pot. And it will make that wonderful gel on the inside with the flour and the butter and all that. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be beautiful. I promise you, you'll love it. But it got to be done in like a skillet, man. It has to be done in a skillet or or something close to it, like a nice, thick baking pan. Get grandma's baking pan. Grandma will know what pan you need for that. Ask grandma all about it. She'll tell you. I believe my grandma talked to me sometime when I'm doing these videos. She'll be like, Junior, add this to it. If you didn't know, that's my nickname. Junior, add this to it. I believe my grandma be talking to me sometime. And she tell me what to do with food. I just have a lot of memories of grandma showing me how to do certain things. And she'll go, yeah, add this here. That's how it's done. Oh, Junior, it's good. So there we are. We filled that up, right? And so the remainder of this, we're going to take this dough right here. We are going to take this and we're going to ball it up. And we'll roll it out into some more dough. And we'll cover this. Oh, just rolling out some more dough. Rolling out some more dough. I actually love rolling out dough, to be honest with you. It's like, kind of like therapeutic almost. You like to see dough come to life, you know what I mean? Like, something about it is just beautiful to me. I don't know. Everyone has their own thing. I like to bake too, so. There's some people that like baking. There's others that like frying chicken. Like the lady said on the help, something about frying chicken just makes you feel better. <laughs> and so maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's because it's something that I like doing that it's really relaxing to me. Like I said before, if this dough falls apart while you're doing it, it's perfectly fine because we're just going to take it and we're going to just mash it in there. Mash is the word we're going to use today. We're going to mash this dough on top of this skillet here just like so, you see that? Let me bring that over here into the light. Step into the light, Carol Ann. Gonna take off all the excess dough around the sides. Y'all, I'm telling you, 
You have never had an apple pie until you had one baked in a skillet. You have not had apple pie or a peach cobbler unless you had it baked in a skillet. I'm telling you, it's something different. It's, it's a whole nother level of baking. It's a whole nother level. All right. Formulate this right here. I'm not going to make it perfect. Now, see, if I was, if I had a lot, a lot of time, I'll make this thing so pretty. I'm going to show you the gist of how it's done. You can style it however you want. Some like to do the little uh, lines, like lattice lines. That's beautiful, too. I think it's lattice lines. What is it? I think lattice, right? Yeah, something like that. But that's beautiful as well. And some people, their lines just don't be... That's a whole other subject. Some people, their lines just, you know, need a little bit of help. But it's all right. It's all right. Listen, we're learning. We're learning together, right? So we're going to do this. Let's use the power of the thumb. And what we're going to do to this is we're going to cut a little hole and make some perforations in there. That way the steam can escape and you don't want to cause a big mess in your oven. Because what happens is whatever the heat of, whatever the heat is that you're cooking with your skillet, the heat of the skillet is going to be twice as hot. I encourage you, do not. And I repeat, do not ever, ever try to pick up a skillet straight out the oven. Get you a good oven mitt. Matter of fact, get two. It's really hot. It's cast iron. It can withhold a lot of heat and um, withstand. It can hold, withhold, withstand. You know what I'm saying. It can hold a lot of heat. It gets really hot. And you're going to be in danger if you touch it with your bare hand. So I, I encourage you, please don't ever do that. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. All right, so we're going to cut a hole in the center of this. Just cut a little hole, let that steam escape. Make it nice and pretty. Take that out. Your steam has to escape through there. Put some little perforations in there. You see what I'm doing? Like that. Some little slits. Let that steam escape, and while it's escaping, it is cooking on the inside. It's doing something beautiful. Okay, okay, okay. Let's add a few more. This paring knife has had about three uses since the video began. You notice that, right? This is my friend. This paring knife is one of my friends in the kitchen. I've cut cheese with this paring knife. I've cut meat with this paring knife. I've cut apples with this paring knife. It's, it's, just, it's just perfect. All right, so we're gonna put this inside the oven. Not yet. What I'm going to do is sprinkle it with some cinnamon. That's what we're going to do. I'm not going to throw it in there just like that. Sprinkle a little cinnamon on there. Just a little bit. You can even dust it with a little bit of sugar. You know, give that little extra sugar for those that are really sweet, sweet people. That little bit of sugar on top, just sprinkle that there, right there. And then, now you can drop it inside the oven. You wanna let this bake for about a good 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the heat of your oven. And once you take it out, you will behold something beautiful. All right. Man, oh man, you see that, that thing bubbling up? It's all done. All done. And Jesus. Ooh, 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 ooh. Lord have mercy. 
You see how that sugar and everything is plopping up out the side, <laughs> bubbling all up. All right, all right, all right. And so our spiced apple pie in the skillet is officially done. I do want to thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your subscriptions. We are now at 241 subscriptions, and I do want to thank you all for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, I really don't know what the problem is. What you waiting for? I know you see the notification. I know you see the post. Go ahead and hit that post notification bell on the bottom right, bottom left of your screen. Select all so that you will be notified every time that Chef DJ posts another video for your tasting pleasure. With that being said, you can close your seasoning cabinet because we're officially done. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spoon some of this good old apple pie on a plate. I'm gonna show you what the inside of it looks like. Because this, and like I said before, hold your skillet with a handle because you don't wanna be burned. You don't wanna be going to the hospital because that's what will happen if you do. Look at that. See how the crust is flaky, nice and crunchy. And when I take this out of here, you're gonna see the magic. Watch this. Watch this right here. Jesus. Woo woo. Lord have mercy. You see that gel? That's what I was talking about. That's why you add your flour. Add a little bit of flour to that. Is that not beautiful? Is that or is that not beautiful? All right, I gotta go. I'm about to eat this. <laughs>